Hello. Thanks for the introduction, Arthur. So my name is Lee. Um, so today my talk is about quantifying blockchain extractable value, how dark is the forest. This is a joint work with Kaihua and Arthur. So many of you might have heard of the book uh, Flash Voice from Michael Lewis. So in traditional finance, there are a plethora of market manipulation techniques, uh, which is typically regulated by regulators. So regulators like the um, SEC in the US, they typically do two types of um, actions. So firstly, they um, come up with some rules and they enforce the rules if someone violates um, the, the policies. So in this particular example, we have seen a company paying 60 million um, penalty to the SEC. So in DeFi, um, very strangely, uh, market manipulation is not yet regulated. So on this slide, I want to give a high level overview of the entire DeFi space. So DeFi stands for decentralized finance. So DeFi builds upon blockchains and blockchains have, have multiple layers. We have the network layer where the transactions are pro propagated and we have the consensus layer and also the application logic layer. So all these DeFi services are built upon the blockchain and also they work with different token standards such as the fungible token, non-fungible token, and et cetera. So for these DeFi services to function efficiently and effectively, they typically rely on some ma market mechanisms such as arbitrage, liquidation, and et cetera. And these market mechanisms actually leads to market manipulations such as, such as front running and back running. So what is blockchain extractable value? Um, so we typically observe this common pattern where starting from blockchain applications, um, they re rely on some events to kind of keep the protocol functioning. And these events can lead to profitable trading opportunities. So taking the landing protocol as an example, um, the landing pro protocol typically um, relies on liquidation. Um, so in the liquidation, basically your collateral is sold by some entity to pay your debt. In traditional finance, this process, um, so, so, so typically um, who, liquidates, who triggers the liquidation is rather certain in traditional finance. So taking home mortgage as an example, um, typically it's the bank who will be selling your property in order to pay the debt. However, in DeFi, um, it's very tricky, like who will be liquidating the position. Um, it can really be anyone. Anyone means like it can be a trader sitting in front of a browser and tr triggering the liquidation manually. It can also be a bot uh, which listens to all types, all types of transactions on network layer and then triggering the liquidation automatically upon de detection of a, of a profitable uh, opportunity. It can also be a miner who kind of um, package the liquidation into the next block they mine. So one thing that's really important to understand um, here is how the transactions are ordered, because this actually determines who will be the winner for the BEV extraction opportunities. So in, the, in this particular example, let's say we have three transactions, T1, T2, and T3. They are received by the miners in this exact order. And can anyone tell me uh, maybe like why transaction three is received first, but actually mined as the last transaction in the next block? Does anyone know? Yeah, right, I heard the gas fee. Yeah, that's right. So uh, miners typically want to maximize their profit. So they are ordering transactions based on how much fee each of the transactions are paying. But what's more important is miners can single-handedly order the transactions. So they can really um, do like order the transactions in any particular order they want. So this gives them a, a, like a very big advantage uh, over the other market players in this um, BEV extraction game. So you might, wo you might wonder how much value has been actually extracted. We have performed um, an, em an empirical evaluation over a 32 months period. So we found out that uh, about 540 million USD was extracted in profit. So our data set only captures one single blockchain that is the Ethereum blockchain. So I would expect the BEV to be much bigger if, uh, if 
somewhat measures the entire blockchain space. So in our data set, we found around 11K uh, unique addresses um, extracting BUV. We have also um, captured uh, 50K cryptocurrencies and 60K markets. So what I want to highlight here is um, the small markets surprisingly actually contribute more to the BEV um, extraction activities. So it's really important to capture as, as many markets and cryptocurrencies as possible to get a holistic view of the entire BEV space. So in the paper, we looked at three different um, BEV sources, namely the sandwich attacks, um, the liquidation, and the arbitrage. So liquidation and arbitrage are also common uh, market um, activities in traditional finance. Sandwich attack is a bit different from the other two, um, but I don't have the enough time to go through in, detail, in details. Um, if you are interested, um, um, I will welcome you to our poster session later um, to discuss about sandwich attacks. So here is how much was extra extracted from sandwich attacks. Um, on the x-axis, I have the time frame. So that's the 32 months period we measured. On the y-axis, we have the monthly profit and also the number of sandwich attacks we observed on chain. So we can see the profit actually increased from um, just a few hundred dollars um, to roughly um, almost like 100 million uh, over the past 32 months. So that's several magnitudes bigger right, comparing to a few years ago. Similarly, we observe something um, similar for arbitrage. Um, we also have like the time frame on the x-axis, and the profit also increased from 1K to roughly 100 million for arbitrage. So for both sandwich and arbitrage, the revenue stream is relatively uh, steady for, for these BEV extractors. The third type of BEV um, we measured is liquidation, which is quite different from the other two. Um, here, you can see a big spike um, on, on, on the plot. Um, so this is because like, liquidations are triggered um, um, more frequently when the market is crashing. So in the UST and Luna event two weeks ago, I I'm expecting a lot of liquidations will be triggered. So in total, we captured uh, about like uh, 90 million liquidation um, um, events. Okay, so we have also proposed a new form of attack, which we call transaction replay attack in the paper. So what's funny is in this attack, the attacker is trying to be a copycat, which basically the attacker observes transactions on the network layer. And it's trying to replace uh, certain data um, in the transaction in order to mimic what the victim is doing. So in a sense, the attacker can extract BEV without understanding anything about what the victim is trying to do. So the algorithm is actually rather simple. So I basically copy the sender, uh, so sorry, I copy the transaction and replace the sender with my own address. And also I copy the value. So for those who are not very familiar with Ethereum, value basically is the amount of Ether, the amount of token I sent in the transaction. And I also copy the input, right? And in the input, I replace uh, the victim's address with my own address. So it's basically three lines of code. And this simple algorithm, surprisingly, can, could have extracted 35 million USD um, over the 32 um, months period we studied. That is 188K um, profitable transactions, roughly 0.02% of the entire um, transactions um, on Ethereum. Um, so, so this algorithm is real time. Uh, we can, on average, process every single transaction under 0.2 seconds. Also, you can observe like a huge spike here, right? This is actually an attack so in a sense, our tool can also act as an intrusion um, prevention tool, where we kind of um, detect the transactions, um, the attacks from the attackers, and as a white hat hacker, I replace the sender in that transaction with my own address, and then I protect the money by, by doing the attack myself. Um, so basically, I need to front run the attacker. Okay. 
So why BEV is an important um, issue in blockchain? What's the security implication? So um, one, the biggest security implication about BEV is um, miners may attempt to fork the blockchain in order to steal the BEV opportunities from the other miners. So we did some um, empirical, uh, we did some analy an analytical evaluation on this, and based on our evaluation, um, it's rational for a miner with 10% of hashing power to fork the blockchain if the BEV is four times the average block reward. But guess how much, uh, what's the biggest um, BEV we have detected? The biggest opportunity is actually 874 times the block reward. So under such, under such a scenario, it means like even the small miners, right, they will try to fork the blockchain, uh, which, is a, which is a huge risk for the consensus, consensus layer of the blockchain because this, this will increase the stale block rate and also uh, make the double spending attacks easier. Okay, so here comes the summary. So in this paper, we studied um, three different types of BEV extraction mechanisms, namely the arbitrage, liquidation, and sandwich attacks. So in total, we have observed roughly um, half a billion profit extracted during this process. We also pros, um, proposed a new attack um, mechanism, which we, which we named transaction replay, which could have extracted uh, roughly 35 million USD in profit. So we expect, so because DeFi is still kind of in its nascent stage, so we expect this BEV issue to become more severe in the future. Uh, we encourage researchers to join us on this exciting topic. Lastly, please allow me to shamelessly adv advertise our DeFi MOOC course. Um, so it's really a fantastic course, um, and uh, I have learned a lot from the course, and I'm, I'm also a TA for the course, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Lee. The, the course will have another iteration in the fall, <laughs> for those in, <laughs> who are interested. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Over there? Okay, great. Conley from Baidu Security. So I noticed that you have the 35 million extracted over the like uh, two year, over the period of time, right? Mm -hmm. But there's one event like allow you to extract uh, maybe like 20 million or something, it's a yep. big jump. Could you just comment about that a little bit? Yeah. So, so this is actually an attack we de 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 detected. It's actually three transactions uh, exploiting some vulnerability. I think it was the Eminem uh, project um, where, where the attacker hacked the, the protocol. So by replacing the sender, right, with our own address, we could have um, acted on that, right, and um, exploited the contract ourselves as a white hacker to, to kind of prevent um, the, the attack. Does thank that you. make sense? Yeah, thank you. Cool. I, I was wondering, so how can you protect against these replay attacks? As a, like if, you, if, you, if you're trading, you don't want any of these bots to engage. What do you do? Uh, good question. That's a very um, interesting <laughs> attack. So, so in my opinion, um, because everything is basically transparent, um, on the blockchain, especially to the miners, because they are the ones packing the transactions. Um, so um, it's, in my opinion, right? Doesn't mean you have to agree. In my opinion, there's no way to prevent uh, replay attacks in general. Any more questions from the audience? And I might have one more question. So you you showed the overlap, right, between the replay and the liquidation and arbitrage. Why is it so small the overlap? I would have thought that that might be if it's if it's a generalized tool, then it should be bigger, right? Yep. So um, there are multiple reasons for this. So firstly, we only measured um, certain um, MEV or BEV opportunities, right? So there can be other activities which we didn't measure. So what we provided is actually a lower bound on the total value extracted. So 
replay could be um, replacing, uh, for example, NFT minting events or, or some other events. So that's why it can be bigger um, comparing to the other two liquidation arbitrage um, 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 circles. And um, the other reason I think is, um, so for, for, for liquidations, um, typically people will have some prevention mechanisms such as preventing, like doing some checks on the senders to make sure the sender has the, has the right address. So this naive replay algorithms might fail in such cases. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lee.